Greetings and welcome to our Spooky Lessons with Odin. This is the final chapter of the Spooky Lessons with Odin for this month, and we will be learning how to make this adorable spooky cage to go around our spooky dome. So the first episode we learned how to make the spooky broom, then we learned how to make the spooky dome, then we learned how to make the spooky chain. And we're finishing it off with the spooky jellyfish. You don't have to do it, you can stop any way you like, but I kind of like how this turned out. It kind of looks like a Victorian birdcage. Really cool. When I first designed it, I considered making it kind of more spider webby, and to kind of go with the theme, um, and might connect beads here, but I decided not to do that and have more details of the little terrarium inside show. So... We are going to be working on the other one that I've created in this lovely orange and green theme. And you can use this technique to obviously wrap whatever other vessels you might have. And you can even use it on pendants and focals and uh, cabochons too. Although if you're doing something flat, you might need to do the whole netting thing. And tonight I'm also having a live stream, a little gaming live stream, that I'm just going to chill out and play Costume Quest on my gaming Twitch. I'll leave links down below if you would like to join me. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All links will be down below. Now let us look at some materials. For this project, you will need size 11 seed beads, size 15 seed beads, some 4mm beads. I'm going to be using these 4mm fire polished old copper etch AB that I procured from backtobead.com. I highly recommend you check them out because they have some pretty spiffy things. And they just got gem duos in these finishes too, which is kind of fun. So, four millimeter beads. We also need three millimeter beads. I have a variety of three millimeter beads that I'm going to be using in order to break up my pattern a little bit. So, whatever you used in your previous piece is the same thing that you're going to be using for this piece. You will need some true two millimeter beads. And then you will need some sort of spacer bead. Now what I mean by that is, here I used demi-round seed beads to break up the pattern a little bit, just to make it interesting. I'm going to be using Delicas for this round, only because I don't have demi-rounds in the color that I want, so I'm improvising. You could totally do that, but demi-rounds, Delicas, you can even use two millimeters if you have enough of them. Just something very small. You can even use like another color size 11 seed bead that contrasts the rest of this. Just something. Something. Do something. You will need some dangly beads. I'm going to be using dagger beads in this case. For this project, the heavier the better so that this can flow nicely and the tension across the bead I have here, the fringe will pull it down so it stays with gravity and it stays downward. So you'll want heavy beads, which is why I'm using daggers and not the baby spikes like I used in the chain. And some sort of focal bead. I'm using this little crystal uh, end cone, end cap thing. I had a pair of these, but I'm splitting up the pairs because this is a really huge thing for a bracelet, and I just have them sitting in my stash. So, I'm going to be using this. I use the same shape for this one too, but you can use other shapes. You can use large metal beads. Uh, those crystal skulls would look kind of cool in here. I didn't have any of them because they're expensive, so I didn't bother with that. You can use rondelles. Something around the 10 to 14 millimeter size is pretty good and pretty heavy as well, so you can pull everything down and let gravity do its part. And of course, your needle and thread. I'm going to be using an IMO as per usual, and I'm going to use a relatively small thread or er, needle, small needle, heavy thread, small needle. I'm using a size 12, or probably will jump to a 13 eventually if I get fed up with it and things break. But that is what you need. Let us get started. Now, if you are someone who is actually good at pre-planning, not like me, um, and good at thinking ahead, you might actually want to do this netting project before you do the chain just because it'll make it a little bit easier to handle your little focal piece um, without this getting in the way. But because I am not a very bright, 
forward-thinking individual, I have to maneuver around what I can. On my thread, I have started by stringing on a pattern of one size 11 seed bead and one true 2 millimeter seed bead, or regular bead, fire polish bead, until I have eight sets total, and a total of 16 beads. So I've got that on my thread. Then I'm going to pass back through every single one of them so that I form a loop. So I'm just going to start by going through everything once more. So you kind of get something like that. I'm gonna slip it through my focal piece so that it sits at the top of my bell and I'm gonna pull tight so that it cinches in together. Then I'm gonna tie an overhand knot with my working thread and my tail end so that we keep everything tight. Then I'm gonna pass my needle through my nearest two millimeter bead so that I hide the knot inside there. Then from there, you're going to add eight size 15 seed beads, your spacer bead, this could be your demi round, or your delica, or whatever you plan on using, eight size 15s, spacer, eight size 15s, spacer, eight size 15s, a three millimeter bead, four size 15s, and one size 11. You're gonna pull this all the way down, Till you've reached your piece, we're going to make a fringe drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip that size 11 bead on the front and we're going to pass back through every single one of these beads once again, except for the very first one at the top. We're going to ignore that one. So I'm just going to pass up through all of these beads and I'm going to pick up all of these except one. You see that one is loose. That one right there. So I'm gonna pull all this up to form a basic fringe drop dripping over the side of it. I'm gonna add one more size 15 seed bead, then jump over the size 11 seed bead here and move on through the next two millimeter bead. And we have created our first fringe drop. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you have made eight of these fringes. Now, of course, all of these measurements may or may not be accurate, depending on the size of your dome, if you're using a different size dome than I am. But just for a frame of reference, my dome is about one and a half inches tall, or rather about four centimeters tall and about an inch wide or about two and a half centimeters wide. So take that into consideration when you're doing the netting of your own. You might need to adjust how many sets you need. You might need to reduce some beads in between. You might need to add more, etc. So this is just word for word what I'm using with this very specific dome. This could change. And when that is all said and done, you will have something that resembles a spider popping a squat on top of your dome. So yeah, all your little tendrils, we're going to now collect them and gather them together. So how we're going to do that is, we are going to take our nearest tendril, and we're going to travel all the way down to the bottom. Until we have reached the size 11 seed bead at the tip. That, the size 11 C bead, is where we want to end up at. Next, I'm going to pick up one 3 millimeter, one 4 millimeter, one 3 millimeter bead, and then I'm going to take the tendril that is adjacent to the one I am at and slip through the size 11 C bead at that tip so that we pinch it together here. And then you're going to repeat that all the way around until you've cinched all eight together. And then I like to end my thread so that I can work with a new fresh thread at the bottom fringe. So go ahead and do that. And that is what you end up with. And this one is kind of bleh off kilter, but we'll fix that in the next steps. Um, This one is going to get a bit touchy. So be patient with this kind of fringe and persevere. And failing that, if you don't feel like doing the fringy bits, you could just do some sort of netting across the way in the center here, but you're brave. So, 
I have started with my thread coming out of a 4mm bead here, and I am going to add two size 15 seed beads, one size 11 seed bead, two size 15 seed beads, and pass back through that 4mm bead so that those that I've just added wrap around it. Like so. Then I'm going to pass through the 3mm bead next over and we'll begin our fringe. Alright, so brace yourselves, for I have added on my thread 10 size 11 seed beads, a demi round, my big focal, another demi round, 10 size 15s, one 3mm, 10 size 15s, one 3mm. 10 size 15s, 1 3mm, 10 size 15s, and a 4mm, 3 size 15s, 1 dagger bead, and 3 size 15s. Now, I've put the demi rounds here because my hole is big enough to swallow my 15 seed beads here, and I don't want that to happen because that's a pain. Um, I'm using a demi round also because the hole of the demi round is big enough for me to go 16 passes through because that's what we're going to end up going through this. So, keep that in mind. You don't have to use demi rounds, but you need something with a large enough hole to go through that many times. And we're going to pass back through all of these beads, starting from the 4mm bead. We're going to skip over the 3 dagger 3, pass up the 4 millimeter bead and just go all the way back up. So I've reached my focal, I'm going through the demi round, the focal, the demi round. Now that I've gotten to my size 11s, what I'm actually going to do is go through all except the last one, just like we did all the way up here. So I'm only going to go through 9 out of the 10 beads here. Like so, I've got one hanging out loose up there. Gonna pull everything tight to make sure I've got no thread showing on the rest of my fringe piece. I'm gonna add one size 11 seed bead, then jump over the three millimeter that is across the way from where my thread has started. So I'm gonna pass through this one to continue my path. Then I'm gonna pass through the four millimeter bead and attach another pico on top of it. So I've got two size 15s, one size 11, two size 15s. I'm gonna pass back through the four millimeter bead to form a loop right on top. I'm going to move on by passing through the next three millimeter bead over. Then I'm gonna add 10 size 11 seed beads. Then I'm gonna pass through the demi round, the focal and the demi round so that I could start a new tendril in my fringe. This is what it should look like from the front and here. So for my tendril, I've added pretty much the same exact thing. However, the very first section, I have added 15 size 15 seed beads instead of 10. This is so that my tendril will hang a little lower than the first one I added. And you can kind of vary this. You have eight strands to work with, so it's kind of up to you if you want everything hanging all at the same place or if you want them to be like variegated and hang in different tendencies. Like I have with this one, you'll see my bottom ones all hang at different intervals. So that's up to you how many you want to add when you do these fringes. So we're going to do the same exact thing, skipping those first segment of beads. We're going to pass up through the 4mm all the way up through the size 15 tendril. Then we'll pass through the focal piece and then up through the tendril of size 11 seed beads that we started from. Now an easy way to tell which one you need to work from is this tends to pull out rather than this one and also check out the three millimeter beads at the starting point to see what is anchored between the two of them. This one is only anchored at one side so this is where we need to move to. So go ahead and anchor your fringe by passing through all of these beads. I have just passed through all of the size 15s and I've passed through my focal and my demi rounds and then I'm going to move up through 9 out of the 10 of my size 11 seed beads. I can see that I've left one alone so I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to add one more size 11 seed bead then pass through the next 3 millimeter and 4 millimeter bead. From here, you add another pico on top of the 4mm bead, move to the next 3mm bead, 
and add another tendril. So you add your size 11 seed beads, you pass through the focal bead, you add another segment of size 15 seed beads and the dagger, you pass back up and around until you get back to where you started from. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you completed all eight tendrils. And after much anguish, this is what we should end up with so far. It's going to get real tight towards the center as you add more tendrils. Don't really worry too much about what it looks like. It's going to drip down, stretch itself out, and situate itself. And also don't worry too, too much if you accidentally catch some of previous tendrils. Just, just don't worry. Don't, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. All right. So we want to do the final round of tendrils on the outside. And what we want to do is... We want to end up at the center size 11 seed bead on one of our 4 millimeter picos. So I'm coming out of a 3 millimeter bead right now, so I'm just going to move over to a 4 millimeter bead, then wrap around and move up until I am at the size 11 seed bead. Then I'm going to begin my other tendrils, and it's going to be pretty much the same exact thing as we've done here, except all of them are going to be the same size. So pick a size and stick with it. So for me, that is going to be 10 size 15s, a 3 millimeter, 10 size 15s, a 3 millimeter, 10 size 15s, a 4 millimeter, 3 size 15s, a dagger, and 3 size 15s. So basically two sets of threes with a four at the end of it. Like we've done so many times before, we're going to pass back up through all of these beads. I'm going to start at the 4mm bead, I'm going to be skipping those 3 seed beads, the dagger of the 3 seed beads, moving all the way up, except, once again, for the very last bead, or technically the very first bead that we've added. So I end up like that, I've got one bead free hangling over there. I'm going to add one more size 15 seed bead and pass back through the opposite side of our size 11 seed beads that I end up continuing around and so that we wrap both sides of that size 11 seed bead, like that. Now I'm just going to go and move to the next 4mm bead. So I'm passing through the 4mm bead that I started with. I'm moving down a 3mm bead, a size 11, 3mm bead. Moving through the next 4mm bead, then up through two size 15s and the center size 11 seed bead on the Pico. Then I'm going to add another tendril. I'm going to repeat that all the way around until I've added all eight of my tendrils that are short and then end my thread. And after much trial and tribulation, you shall have your finished results. Adorable, spooky little terrarium. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. This was a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed how these turned out. They were it was a process, and I really enjoyed this sharing this little evolution with you guys. I hope you guys try this out. Be sure to share with me pictures because I want to see your spooky interpretations. So join us on our Facebook group. Really? Yes. Kitty wants you to join too. Who's being the fluffiest? Are you being a fluffy? Yes? One, oh, yes. Are you a pretty princess? Yes, you are. You are a pretty spooky princess. You. I'm, I'm gonna go finish. I gotta, I gotta finish my outro now. Okay? I gotta finish my outro. Anyway, join us! Our Facebook group, Creations from Lessons with Odin. All links are down below. We would love to see you there and talk with other beauty peoples. And things and stuff because it's fun and beauty. So yes, also let me know what your spooky plans are today. This is Halloween, I believe. I don't know. I'm recording this in the past and scheduling it in the future. So I think today is Halloween. So join me tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on my gaming Twitch channel. This is different from my beating Twitch channel. I have two channels because two different audiences. So, I will be live 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All links will be down below. Don't ask me what time it is in your part of the world. Please Google it. So anyway, I think that will do it from me. Be sure to like up this video and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. 
Spooky season is coming to an end, but it's always spooky here because I am a spooky spook. Be sure to check out my sci-fi book and my writing fiction blog because there's some fun, entertaining things going on. And the end is coming. The end is approaching. I'm so excited about it. But anyway, everything, all pertinent links, will be down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below. And I will see you next time. Mmm, it's supposed to be adding three millimeter beads. One in.